what I'd like to do in this short recording is to make some attempt to explain to you some of the dynamic aspects of bone growth at the epiphyseal plate. So let's begin with this image which I've captured from one of the virtual microscope slides which shows the epiphyseal plate. And without belaboring the uh, exact differences between them, uh, let's begin just by labeling the various zones of the epiphyseal plate. So for example here I've included part of the resting zone and part of the growth zone. Uh, then here I've got uh, includes part of the growth zone the zone of cell uh, hypertrophy and cell death. Uh, then beneath that again is the zone in which you have frank cell death and also um, osteogenesis, the formation of bone on calcified cartilage, and angiogenesis, the ingrowth of blood vessels. And finally down at this end on the opposite side of the epiphyseal plate to the resting and growth zone is the zone in which bone uh, formation has occurred and the bone is now being remodeled to form um, mature uh, lamellar bone. So those are the zones. Now to make um, the explanation a little more simple I'm going to get rid of the actual picture of the epiphyseal plate and what I'd like to do now is just to represent the epiphyseal plate by a series of boxes. Uh, there's one for the resting zone. Uh, here's one for the growth and hypertrophy and uh, cell death zone. Uh, here's one a box for the cell death angiogenesis and osteogenesis zone and then finally here here's the region in which bone uh, remodeling actually occurs so where we have just bone and uh, not much cartilage uh, to simplify matters again we'll just get rid of the labeled boxes here and now what I'd like to do is indicate to you that we have um, here the region that is the actual epiphyseal plate is composed of these three zones and the area below it so this is epiphyseal plate and the area below it is actually bone even though it's undergoing remodeling it's not actually part of the epiphyseal plate so nothing terribly complicated there now let's actually look at what happens in the um, cell growth zone at the epiphyseal plate uh, chondrocytes divide make more chondrocytes and those new chondrocytes begin to secrete additional cartilage so what this is going to do is effectively uh, increase the thickness of the growth zone and uh, resting zone of the epiphyseal plate as it does so the cells and toward the inside inner part of the epiphyseal plate are now deprived of oxygen and so they're going to undergo hypertrophy and um, cell death and so effectively the process begins like this and then the cells in toward the middle will undergo angiogenesis and vasculogenesis and then we have formation of bone and bone remodeling. Let's repeat the process one more time by increasing the number of cells and the amount of cartilage at the epiphyseal plate which again isolates the cells in here so they undergo hypoxia and that means that these cells are going to become uh, cells in the begin to exhibit signs of cell death and uh, hypertrophy uh, once that happens the cartilage erodes away and we get vascular um, elements beginning to invade and uh, bone deposition occurring and then after the bone deposition has occurred initially we have bone formation and bone remodeling. And what I'd like to indicate to you is that at the end of that process we remain with an epiphyseal plate which is composed of the same zones as it was in the beginning and hasn't increased at all in thickness so that's the epiphyseal plate and yet by the production of cartilage and the conversion of that cartilage to bone we have significantly increased the length of the bone that's found here. Now we've just seen how bones grow in length by the addition of uh, additional hyaline cartilage at the epiphyseal plate and the conversion of that cartilage to bone. How do bones grow in width? Well this little uh, cartoon is I hope going to illustrate that for you. Here what I've done is I've taken the shaft of a long bone and I've sectioned it down along its long axis longitudinally so that we can see the wall of bone here and the wall of bone here with the marrow cavity in between. Now, in order for the bone diameter to increase, the marrow cavity will have to increase in size. But also, as the marrow cavity increases in size, in order to retain bone strength, the thickness of the uh, wall of the diaphysis is also going to have to increase somewhat. And the way in which these two things can be accomplished simultaneously, that is, increase in diameter of the marrow cavity, accompanied by increase in thickness of the bony wall of the marrow cavity, is as follows. What happens is that bone deposition predominates on the external periosteal surface of the bone 
and bone resorption predominates on the internal endosteal surface of the bone. But the rate of bone deposition on the external surface exceeds the rate of bone resorption on the internal surface. Let's take a look at how that might work in cartoon fashion. So first, let's increase the thickness of the bone on the external surface by allowing osteoblasts to synthesize and secrete new bone. Having secreted that bone, let's now allow osteoclasts to resorb some bone from the internal uh, surface, but not as much bone as has just been deposited on the external surface. So there's some bone resorption has taken place. Now, once again, let's add some additional bone to the external surface, just as we did before, by net osteoblast activity. So here's that bone being added to the external surface of the bone. And then again, once again, let's remove some bone from the internal surface, but not as much as has just been added. And let's do this just one more time. Let's add some additional bone to the external surface, as we're doing just now. Net osteoblast activity. And let's remove some bone, nest osteoclast activity, from the uh, internal surface, but not as much as has been added, which you've done just now. And if once we do that, we'll see that we've accomplished uh, two things. The first is that the marrow cavity has increased in diameter or increased in size. And the second thing is that the thickness of the bony wall of the diaphysis, which began at this thickness here, has also increased. And this is the means by which bones grow in width.